Okay, before we start with our bread recipe, I want us to talk about our pan, our love pan that we're going to be making our bread in. And this is a Pullman pan, but there's different sizes, and that's something we got to discuss. <clears throat> now, the recipe I'm going to be making will be for this size of a Pullman pan, and the one I've got is a 13 by 4 and then 4 inches deep. Um, they've got a couple sizes. Let's see. I'm going to read so that I don't say it wrong. And each uh, different size, I'll have the different recipes down in the uh, information box below my videos. Let's see. There's like mine. There's a 13 by 4 by 4. There's a 9 by 4 by 4. And there's a 7 by 4 by 4. And I've got the recipe for all three of those. So it's whatever size you got. Or maybe you don't have a Pullman pan yet and you want to go. I've got it in my Amazon store. Uh, I'm, there's lots of places online you can go get them. And um, there's different sizes. You may not want the this size. This size right here is an excellent, especially if you've got kids. Of course, it's just me and Mr. Brown, but uh, I can cut this in half. I have to and, and freeze half of it, but <laughs> that's not going to happen because even if knowing that, because we'll make sandwiches out of this, then take to lunch, you know, for our lunches and stuff. So I'd really, it's not going to Go, and I can even make French toast out of this because it's really going to be good with it being brioche. Or I can share it with my grandkids, either one. So either way, this size loaf is going to get eaten pretty quick. So the size I'm making will be a 13 by 4 by 4. And this is, now a lot of y'all have already got Pullman pans. And it just it has a lid that, that's going to fit on top where you can close it just like that and before uh, you know it's gonna be a while but before we put our our bread in here I'm gonna butter the inside really good the welcome to Whippoorwill Holler I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown we live in the hills of Arkansas we love the Lord keepers of the old way but accept some of the new we love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. If you're wondering where we're at in the kitchen, <laughs> this is the other side of the kitchen. This is up against the far wall and the window. And of course, over here is my, my settler's cabinet and stuff. But anyways, this is where all my bread making stuff is. And I've got it set up where I've got uh, my drawers down here with my flour and stuff in it. And uh, my meal's over here. I can keep my grain over here, my whole berry, wheat berries and stuff. So I'm set up on this side to make bread. So let's get started on making our brioche bread. Okay, let's get started with our bread. Now I'm using my Nutrimil Artiste mixer. Y'all seen me use this before with bread. I uh, do big uh, batches of cookies with it. Uh, you can do anything with it. It comes with different attachments. But uh, I either use this or I use my big KitchenAid, which I love too. Or you can do it by hand, either one. You don't have to have these special machines or mixers to make bread, that's for sure. First thing we're going to do is I've got some warm milk here. When I warm my milk, I just warm it to the same temperature that you would warm uh, your infant's milk, where you would kind of touch it on your, you remember you touch it on your, 
right here and just if it was just you could just feel it just barely warm that was not too hot but just warm enough for that baby to drink and that's how the temperature <laughs> that I use my warm milk to make my bread that's just how I've always done it so we're going to pour our our milk in here that is three-fourths cup of whole milk and to our whole milk we're going to add one tablespoon of yeast and I'm just going to take it and kind of spread it around in there and I've got to see I've got three tablespoons of sugar now brioche bread is a little sweet so that's why it's got three tablespoons of sugar and you can cut back on that if you want to so we got our milk our yeast our sugar and then I've got five whole eggs right here and we're going to pour our eggs in there and of course I don't know why I've done that but I put them I put them on the wrong side I meant to put them on the liquid side and I put them on the other side but either way it's going to work y'all I just wasn't paying attention but a lot of y'all have commented on my two-way measuring cup here and I love this thing this size for the dry and this is for the wet and where I got this from was from Home Goods in Jonesboro, and I think you can go online with Home Goods. Now I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to mix it. Just try to get everything in there incorporated. I can tell you I absolutely love this mixture but like I said you don't have to have this mixture to make good bread I've got a whole egg yolk that I'm watching for some reason that's not breaking up there we go I like to use this uh, this one attachment when I'm making bread Okay, now we're going to add our flour. Now, you know, earlier I was saying, you know, you can make this breads and just mix them by hand, which I've done for years. But then I want to take that back about the brioche. Brioche has a lot of butter in it that you want to work into that dough. And, and if you've got a lot of time and you've got really good, strong hands and you want to work that butter in by your hands, oh, it'd be a beautiful loaf of bread. But I can't do that, so... Yes, by all means, when you're making brioche, use uh, either your KitchenAid or, like I've got here, my Nutribill Meal Artiste. So now what I'm going to do, you don't even have to let it set and, and pray for anything. It's good. So I'm going to take five cups of bread flour. And if you don't have bread flour, you can use all-purpose the texture is always a, a little better, a little different when you use your bread flour. But you know what? I've made bread many years with nothing but all-purpose flour. So it's five cups. And I already had it measured out, but, it, you know, sometimes I think I've got to measure it twice. I'm OCD about that, I guess. I don't know. Now, making bread can be different every time. And we've talked about this before. I'm going to put um, one and a half teaspoons of salt. You can use kosher salt. I'm just using my Himalayan salt here. One and a half teaspoons. I'm going to cough just a minute. Okay. It depends on your weather. It depends on the humidity or the dryness inside your house. It's always going to differ. Today, I'm not sure. Like I said, I put three-fourths cup of warm milk in there. And I could, I might have to add a little more. I don't know. May not. Uh, because I want my dough sticky. I don't want it loose. I don't want it shaggy. I just want it sticky. So anyways, we got our flour and salt in there. So we're going to mix that up. Mm 
and I'm gonna let this just mix well and then I'm gonna let it knead on medium speed for about one minute so it's starting to mix up really good and your brioche bread is it's a little sweeter and with all them eggs and that butter, it is going to be one of the richest breads you ever ate. And it makes wonderful French toast. And if you ever have any leftovers, it makes wonderful bread pudding. Now, my dough is looking really, it's looking really wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it knead for about one minute. And then I'm going to see how sticky it is. And if I feel like it, now I don't like adding flour to my bread. I can tell you that much. But if I feel like it's too sticky, I am going to add just a little bit of flour to it. It is scraping the sides down pretty good and bringing it together. I'm going to let it knead just a little bit longer. And you can see the texture of it. You can see it coming together. And like I said, I want a sticky dough. I'm, on, I'm just going to touch it. And you see how sticky that is? It's not loose, but it's real sticky. Okay. I'm going to turn this back on for about another minute. I'm going to let it knead for one more minute. Now, I've already let it knead about a minute, but I think it needs about another minute. <laughs> Our dough, I went ahead and let it knead about another four minutes. And you can see it's sticky, but it's smooth and it's like elastic like. The feel of it's like elastic feel, just kind of. So, at this point, what I'm going to do is start adding my butter, and it is sticky. Now, I've got three-fourths cup. I think what I've got right here is 14 tablespoons of butter cubed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to my dough, and I'm going to kind of help it out, and I'm just going to stick it down in that dough just like that now I've got four tablespoons about in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on <laughs> I don't know if I helped that any okay now you want your butter at room temperature I'm not sure if mine's quite soft enough, but it'll work its way in there. I'm just gotta give it time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work each each cube of butter in there just a little bit at a time till I get it all mixed up.
Okay. After the butter got all incorporated into my dough, I left it kneading for about six minutes. And this is the texture that I got. Now the one thing you have to remember too is a loose, a soft loose dough is not bad. You're going to get a soft, puffy, delicious bread out of it. So don't be tempted if you think it's just too loose to add any flour to this, really and truly. So I'm going to try to get all this out here, and I'm just going to put it, I've got olive oil in the bottom of my bowl here. Scrape all this out. Now I know people are going to be asking me, Miss Lori, do I have to make this recipe in a Pullman loaf pan? No, you don't. I'm using the Pullman loaf pan to get the kind of sandwich looking bread. Um, it makes such a pretty loaf. It's just pretty. So, no, you could use uh, two of your regular uh, bread pans, loaf pans. So I'm just going to take it, and I'm just going to, oh, it feels so good. That dough feels really good. And I'm just going to kind of form it in a disc. I'm not even going to mess with it much because it has been kneading, like I said, for six minutes there at the last. And then before that, I had kneaded it four minutes. So I got a little bit of olive oil on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me some plastic wrap. <coughs> My hands are kind of oily. Wipe them off just a little bit. Now I'm going to cover this up with plastic wrap, and what I'll do is put it in a warm, kind of warm place with no drafts in it. And I'm just going to let this sit, and I'm going to let it double. It could take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, just depends. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do from that point on. And you might be surprised. This is a dough that you're going to be able to make the day ahead and then bake it the next day. So I'm just going to stick it here in my oven. The oven's not on. And I'm just sticking it back there. And yes, that door needs to be oiled. Uh, I'm just going to let it sit. We'll be back after it doubles. And we'll talk about what we're going to do after that. Okay, I want to talk just a little bit. Just, just some side notes about making bread. Making this bread. And, I mean, I always talk about how, you know, your liquids and your, your flour and stuff are going to differ because of your climate and stuff, and it's, that's just what it is. Um, I've had people comment saying, Lori, you're so right. One day to the next is going to be different about how much flour or how much water or how much milk. So there is truth to that. It says, for accuracy, use a weight measure for the ingredients because every cup of flour can weigh differently depending on how you fill it, and that's so true. I don't think y'all have seen me uh, weigh my flour, and I, I, I have done that, and I guess I need to start doing that, and y'all watch me do it, and I, I know some of y'all do it, especially in other countries. Y'all weigh your, your dry ingredients instead of measuring it out in a cup, and, and you do. You get a more accurate uh, weight there. 
And it says uh, the milk must be warm, not hot, about 110. If the milk's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. And similarly, if the milk is too cold, it will not activate the yeast. Now, there's a lot of people that, that have not made bread that are new to this. So, this is just stuff that's, uh, that they need to know. It says, though instant dry yeast has a long shelf life, it can get ruined. Always check the, the expiration date on the yeast. If unsure, combine the yeast with water and milk, sugar, honey, oil, butter from the recipe, and let it stand for five minutes. If it gets foamy, the, the yeast is good. If if it does, you know, if it doesn't, you need to buy some fresh some fresh yeast. And I had bought yeast at the store that wasn't any good either. And it had a pretty good es uh, expiration date on it, so I don't, you know. But I keep my, my dry yeast uh, in the refrigerator. You can keep it in the freezer. I know some people say that that kills it too, but I've never had any trouble with keeping it in the refrigerator. You just don't want it to draw any uh, moisture or dampness, so it it might be better to put it in the freezer. And I also keep some just out in, in my settler's cabinet. I don't, you know, at room temperature. I've not, um, I've never had a whole lot of trouble with yeast going bad. I guess because I use it a lot. Um, it says keep salt away from the yeast because it can kill the yeast. Uh, combine it with the flour and then add it to the yeast mixture. And that's combine your salt with your flour and then com combine it with your, your yeast mixture. That way your salt's just not directly in contact with your yeast and kills your yeast. It says a soft, loose, well hydrated dough is not necessarily a bad thing. It often will give you a soft, puffy bread, so don't be tempted to add more flour that's mentioned in the recipe. Kneading the dough is key to making good bread. Why kneading by hand can be so therapeutic, and it is. I've got one of the first videos I ever put out. If y'all have not seen it, you got to go way back in there. It's me making a huge batch, and I think if I could be wrong. It was either 10 or 20 pounds of flour because I was putting it all up in the in the freezer. And that video was more therapeutic for people watching me do it, and it was for me too, than it was even the bread recipe. It's just, it it is very therapeutic. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I got a tickle in my throat today. Okay, kneading is a key for making good bread. While kneading by hand can be therapeutic, using a stand mixture is easier and quicker, especially for a brioche. Leave the dough at room temperature to rise until double in volume. While not recommended, when in haste, you can place it in a warm but not hot oven, and this will expedite the rise. Bread does not have to be time-consuming. You can leave the dough in the fridge to rise for a few hours, even overnight, while you go about doing your chores. <coughs> you can, uh, let's see, a slow rise will give you more flavor, and that's what we're fixing to do with this bread. That's why I, I told you, when we come back, we're going to talk about what we're going to be doing with the bre this bread dough. I'm going to let it rise here for probably an hour, an hour and a half. It just depends on how long it takes for it to rise double. And then... From there, I'm sticking it right into the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, we'll make our bread. Um, you don't have to do that, but you are gonna have a lot more flavorful bread, and especially at being a brioche. It's just that fermentation, it's also gonna take on being in the refrigerator for six to eight hours. In my case, it's gonna be in there longer than that because I've gotta go to work, but uh, it's going to be a good bread. I can't wait to get it baked. It says, bread does not have to be time consuming. You can leave the dough in the fridge, like I said, to to, uh, to rise a few hours. Also, preheat your, uh, pre your oven for at least 10 minutes before you place bread in, or the low temperature will spread the dough too much. And I think that's, people get in a haste to... Uh, you know, it says 350, put it in there, but let that heat up, get to the temperature it's supposed to be, and just give it just a couple of minutes just to reach that right, that right uh, oven temp, and then put your bread in there. 
So that's just some fun facts for people that don't bake very much bread. And um, I've had, people have been asking me for more um, bread machine recipes. And I'm going to be doing that too because I can tell you, especially this summer, I use my bread machine all the time to make my bread. And I really like my bread machine. <coughs> okay, guys, an hour and a half, and you can see how, how my bread has risen there in that bowl. Now, what am I going to do? <clears throat> this is going straight in the refrigerator. And it's going to do its ferment, and it's going to just keep getting better and better and better. And then when I get in from work, we're going to bake our bread. So, my dough has been in the refrigerator since yesterday afternoon. And it's been in there, and I've been at work all day. When, it, when I got it out, of course, I had the plastic wrap on it. I punched it down. Now, this is a really cold dough, y'all. So, it has firmed up. It's cold. You can smell how it's fermented, you know, being in the refrigerator for that many hours. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just put me just a little bit of my bread flour out here. Not very much. You don't want too much. And we're going to bring our dough out. And it's still cold and it's, it's a lot firmer than it was when you put it in the refrigerator. This is my Pullman loaf pan. It's a 13 by 4 by 4. And... Uh, like I told you earlier, there's different sizes, and I will put those sizes down and the recipe for those sizes down in the information uh, box below the video <clears throat> where all my information recipes always are. So what I'm going to do, though, is I've got some unsalted butter right here that's already at room temp. Y'all, I know I've got all kinds of colors going on here. I just got in from work, and I wanted to get my dough started because I want to get it baked tonight and uh, I still got my whoops I'm sorry about that I still got my scrubs on from work and it's got Looney Tunes on the kids just love my scrubs and of course I got my my fall apron on so I just got everything going on but I'm just going to take some butter and I'm going to butter my pan if you would rather spray it good with something, that's just fine. I choose to butter mine. You can use olive oil. Now, there will be another long proofing time with this. That's why I wanted to come in and get this done. <clears throat> but I'm telling y'all, it's, it's just so worth it. And you know, that's part of being frugal is you know, doing this stuff yourself. Oh, I could go to, to Walmart, to the bakery section, or Kroger, or something that has some really delicious brioche bread. They really do. And buy it. But I'd have to get in my truck. I'd have to waste the gas driving all the way to the store. And then spend the money on the bread, plus the fact that if I go in... That's Mr. Brown. That is a uh, security alarm, <clears throat> and there's different ones, and <laughs> what he's doing is he's driving by on his tractor. I may have to turn it off, but anyways, I got that buttered real good. What was I talking about? Oh, and then if you go in the store, you're going to end up buying other stuff, so you're going to end up spending money that you don't need to, so this is just a part of, yeah, you know, making bread is a process. Some breads are so much easier, and brioche is a little bit of process, but it's so delicious. Y'all, I'm going to turn that alarm off. <laughs> I think he's doing that on purpose. He's going to think that's funny, but I think I've got it turned off. Y'all, there's, uh, <clears throat> there's several different uh, security alarms. And they're set up in different places. And each one has a different sound. <laughs> so that's what you were hearing. <clears throat> so I had to turn it off. He's out there bush hogging. And he's probably going around circles. 
But anyways, we've got our dough here. I've got my pan buttered. And um, I like to heat my oven up just, it's just like 100, I don't know. Right now it's at 95 degrees and it's going to just stay right there. And uh, that's what, I'm going to put this in so it'll prove, proof. And within probably an hour and a half, two hours, uh, it's going to be where I want it. But I'm not going to need this very much. I'm just going to need it a little bit. And I don't want to use very much flour here on my board either. But, you know, we started out with such a soft, um, wet, sticky dough. And, of course, it's been in the, my refrigerator for several, several hours. But it's took on a fermentation. It's got uh, all that butter in it. It's just going to be so good. And yes, a brioche is just a little bit more time consuming. But you know what? Anything worth doing and anything worth having is worth doing, right? <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Okay, we got all kinds of noises going on here tonight. Now the clock's going off. 15 is 6.15. Okay, that's a pretty, pretty dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring y'all over here closer and I'm going to show you how we're going to roll this up and uh, put it in our Pullman pan. <clears throat> okay, our dough, you want to either roll it out or you can stretch it. But what I want is I want to stretch it to the same, try to get as close to the width, 13 inches, of my pan. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it to the middle. Then I'm just going to take the side of my hand and just kind of press that down. Or take your fingers, press it down just like that. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it one more time to the very end. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to take the ends and I'm going to fold them in. And then I'm going to start pinching and I'm fixing to start rolling. And what it'll do is I'll get it stretched back out. I'm going to bring that all the way to the middle. Pinch that in. Now there's, I know people do it differently. So now, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to start rolling. And I've got just enough flour on my board still to keep it from sticking, but not to where it'll have too much uh, flour on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch these seams right here in the middle. Just pinching. It's getting kind of sticky, so I'm going to have to put just a little bit more flour on my board. And then I'll start rolling it. Pinch it again. 
try to pinch it and tuck it under. Not too much flour, but just enough to keep it from uh, sticking to your board. And my dough is already, um, I can feel it. It's starting to loosen up again. It's not as cold and firm as it was. And like I said, I've got a warm place to put it because it's going to need to proof. So I'm going to put it in here, then I'm going to tuck the ends under. And then I'll press it down is what I'll do. Okay, our dough is looking good. I'm going to stick it in here. Flop it down there. Just kind of tuck the ends in just a little bit. And then I'm going to start pressing it. And like I said, different people have different ways. This is just how I do it. I want to get it in there. And what it's going to do, it's going to rise, of course. So if it's not just right up against the edge, that's okay, because when it rises again, it's going to fill all that up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my plastic wrap. Okay, we've got our plastic wrap over the top. Now, this is going to go in a very warm place, and it's going to be rising, and it's going to be rising anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. And what I want is I don't want it, I want to watch it because I don't want it up to the top. I want it just below the top. And then what I'll do is I will butter the top of my lid and I'll put my lid on it. And then our oven will have been warmed good, preheated, and uh, we'll bake it. This size loaf will take anywhere from 45 to 50 minutes. And it's just going to depend, but we'll see how long it takes. So I'm going to put this in my warm place. Uh, I, like I said, I heated my oven earlier, turned it off. I didn't heat it very hot. And uh, in fact, it was ju I just heated it to warm. Some, some ovens have that. Uh, my oven here, my older oven, you just, I can turn it down pretty low, my propane oven back here, and uh, I can get it down there about 9,500 degrees. And then I turned it off. I even uh, opened the, cracked the door just a little bit, and because I just, I don't, I just want it enough to where it's just going to be warm in there. It's going to love it, and it's going to rise and do its thing. And then we're going to come back, and we're going to bake this thing and we're going to taste it. And I can tell you right now, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting excited. So, let's get this thing rising so we can bake it and get this show on the road. Okay, you know the saying, do as I say, <laughs> don't do as I do. <laughs> uh, I got sidetracked. You remember me telling y'all, don't let this rise above the edge. It, ne it, it needed to be down here below the edge. Okay, we're going to deal with this. This is, this, is, this is the day in the life of Mr. and Ms. Brown. We always get sidetracked. But we're going we're gonna to do this. My lid, I, I buttered it really good. And uh, we're going to put it on here. We're going to do it. 
it's going to smash it, but uh, I don't know what to tell you. See if I can get it on there. Woo! Can I do this, Mr. Brown? I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> okay. Okay. Y'all don't do this. Make sure it don't rise like this. Now I've got my oven preheating to 350. And I'm gonna cook this with the cover on it. Talk about a good dough now. This and fermenting in that refrigerator on now, I'm telling you, it smells so good. <laughs> I'm almost I there. I, I don't think you're gonna get it shut. I, I'm almost there. It's pushing it. I know it. <laughs> Stay on there. Okay. Hopefully this is going to work right after me letting that rise too high. But what this is going to do is it's going to keep it, it'll keep it down and keep the shape. And I'm going to leave the lid on it. I'm going to put it in my preheated oven, 350 oven. And I'm going to let this cook for 30 minutes with the lid on. And then we come back. We're going to hope that this lid comes off. And then we'll stick it back in there and finish cooking it. And it's gonna it's gonna brown that top, get golden brown, and I'm ready. But don't don't let it rise like that, y'all. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, I've let it cool off enough to get this lid off. It's still pretty hot, and it's still even as much as I let it rise. It's still done a good job. Look at that beautiful golden brown took about 35 minutes that's all it took and we're going to check it and we're going to make sure it's done and I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can tell if your bread's done in the middle a lot of y'all know that cook a lot of bread know that you can uh just kind of tap it around the side. If it sounds hollow and stuff, it's usually done in the middle. I didn't even, I just let it bake. I didn't even take the lid off of it. So a lot of people, I let it cook so long, take the lid off, and then you hear that. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, you can hear the hollowness. But I'm going to check it. We're going to temp it. If it gets it to at least 180 degrees, it's done in the middle. But you still want your bread to sit because it's continued to to steam and, and cook a little. But I am going to go ahead and put the lid back on. I'm going to let it sit here and let it cool down just a little bit more before we dump it out. And uh, leave that lid on there and that will keep that bread moist. Okay, it's been a little while. It's still a little bit warm, but I think it's cool enough that we can dump it out. And I can't wait to dump it out. I hope it's as pretty all the way around as it is on the top. I really thought it would take longer for it to bake, but a good 35 minutes and it was done. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> it is to me. It don't take much to excite me though. I'll come see how pretty this is. A pretty loaf of bread. bread. <laughs> If you hear people in the background, that's Paul and the grandkids. So there's a little bit of a lip on the edge where where it had risen too much. You can see kind of on the top, but the bottom looks good. Sounds hollow. Just tap it. You can hear that hollowness in it. But there is a little bit of a an edge on there, but that's okay. It'll be crunchy and be good. It's going to be some beautiful bread. Now, I want to slice this bread, but I want to be careful about slicing it. And I've got a, a bread slicer uh, 
I'm going to show it to you that just makes life so much easier when you're slicing bread. And I also have my good Rada bread knife that I absolutely love. I think you can still get it on Amazon. And this is what I use to cut my bread so I can get good even slices. I got this many years ago from Amazon and I looked and they don't have this. I didn't see it. I couldn't find it. They don't have this one anymore, but they do have some. And I did put it in my Amazon store, but I'm going to have to do something with that, the edge of the top of that bread because my bread's not coming all the way to the end of my bread slicer. So we're either going to have to trim that edge a little bit and get that crust off there or just kind of bend it up one or the other. Because if I don't, I'm not going to get a good even slice because the end of my loaf needs to go to the end of this. Fit pretty square with it. Now we're just going to slice. Woo. That just sliced real easy. The crust, and once you get to the middle, it's so soft. And I'm just going to cut a couple pieces. You can see the steam coming out of it is still pretty hot. And you see the texture of that bread. Pretty, pretty bread. And you remember, I told you, you didn't have to ferment it overnight in the refrigerator like I did. You can go ahead and cook it just as soon as it comes to its second rise. This has got a little bit of fermentation to it, a little bit like sourdough, brioche, a rich, beautiful bread. So me and Mr. Brown are going to get us some butter and we're going to taste this bread. I'm going to cover it up with just a, a tea towel before I wrap it up because I want it cooled down completely before I wrap it up. But I still want to keep that steam around that bread, keep that bread good and tender and soft. Do you think Mr. Brown might want a piece of this warm bread? I'm kind of thinking he probably does, even as light as it is. <laughs> I know I am. Okay, everybody, I hope y'all have enjoyed this video. I may even made some croutons out of it, and they were wonderful. Thank you for watching. Come back and see us. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Like us. Ring that bell. We love y'all so much. We'll see y'all in a couple days.